The virtual reality gaming landscape is starving for excellent military and tactical shooter games. There's just not a lot of options out there, and there haven't been any truly significant attempts to bring a major title to market with a wide appeal across major platforms. If you guys have been around this channel for any amount of time, then you know I'm an enormous advocate for virtual reality gaming, and I also believe it is destined to have a significant impact on the way that armed professionals train in the future. I've said it time and again, and I still believe it, virtual reality is magic. It is becoming increasingly more affordable, and if you are a gamer that doesn't yet own a virtual reality headset, well, it's time to take the leap, because the game that I'm going to be telling you about today is, in my opinion, the first significant, major, well-funded, and well-developed attempt to bring a tactical game to the market with broad appeal across multiple platforms and the ability to lure new gamers into virtual reality for the very first time. The game is called Ghosts of Tabor, and it's developed by Combat Waffle Studios, which happens to be a veteran-owned company, which obviously gives them bonus points in my book. And before I tell you more about their game, and in the interest of full disclosure, I think it's important to share with you that I have partnered with Combat Waffle Studios to help promote this game as they bring it to market in March of 2023. And while I'm obviously incentivized to tell you that Ghosts of Tabor is going to be a badass game, it's easy to tell you that because it's something that I just genuinely believe, and this isn't a partnership that I went into lightly. I looked at this game deeply, and I even got hands-on the developer build before I agreed to do any sort of sponsored content. And after I took a look behind the curtain and saw how they're running their operation and how this game is being developed, the decision was a no-brainer. This is exactly the type of game that virtual reality needs, and it's exactly the type of game that I think has the potential to bring more people into the virtual reality space, and it is the kind of game that could have staying power and change the VR landscape for years to come. So what is Ghosts? of Tabor. Well, their website calls it a multiplayer virtual reality survival military shooter set in a post-apocalyptic war. They also claim that it's inspired by DayZ, Escape from Tarkov, and Arma, and I've seen evidence of all of that in my playthroughs so far. It is a looter shooter at its heart, but it's also steeped in lore that's worth doing your research on. I'd encourage you guys to check out their website so you can read the little blurb on there that explains how you find yourself in this catastrophic post-apocalyptic wasteland, but the bottom line is that a internal strife in Eastern Europe resulted in a major global conflict, and eventually a tactical nuclear device is detonated, stranding combatants on the small island off the coast of Tabor. And it is in this environment that you, as a member of one of these fledgling factions, find yourself stranded and have to figure out what actually caused the detonation and who is responsible for it. And while some of the gameplay loop is still in development, there is a very clear path forward. And I can share with you what I've experienced so far in the developer and the tester builds that I've been able to enjoy. Like some other games in the genre, Ghosts of Tabor uses a hub and spoke style game design. This means that when you begin the game, you start off in a safe house, your safe house, a place that you can make and create as your very own. You have an arms room where you can store all of your equipment, and as you bring more equipment out of raids, you can actually take those guns, and rather than storing them in some sort of user interface menu system like you would on a traditional non-VR game, because you're in virtual reality, your inventory is the arms room. So you take out that AKM that you pulled off of a dead guy from a raid and you clear it and you store the magazine on the wall and it puts it in a little rack and then you take your AKM and you can put it on the wall in its own little rack and then you can go over to your storage area and you can take out the food that you may have scavenged while you were in your raid and you can put it on the shelves, you can organize your medical supplies and you can really make this area your own space. And if you're like me, that sort of persistent feeling of making progress and making a piece of the game your very own is extremely enticing and it gives you a sense of ownership and persistence and progression. What I also found extremely cool is that in your arms room, you can actually walk over to this workbench that's behind your weapon rack and you can take your weapons and you can drop them into a gun vise so that you can work on them. This means that if you happen to pick up a red dot on a weapon system or you find it in a loot crate, you can stuff it in your backpack and when you come out of the raid, you drop your gun into the vise, you walk over there and you can take that red dot and you can slap it onto the pick rail of your M4 or your AKM if you have the slide 
rail adapter. And then you can customize your weapon as you see fit. You can throw a suppressor on it. You can put a grip on it. And you can really make it your own and increase your capabilities so that when you go out again, you're even more prepared for the next fight. And if you don't find all of the loot that you want in your raids, you can also earn currency and then take that currency to the Tabor market where you can walk around with a literal handheld scanner and go shopping for more gear. You walk up to the wall, look at the weapon that you want to purchase. You can actually take it off the shelf. You can work the action. You can manipulate the safety. You can aim down the sights and you can really get a feel for what that weapon is going to do and how it's going to perform. And if you choose to buy it, you scan it with your handheld scanner, walk over, check out, and it delivers it all back to your safe house. You go back to the safe house, you push a little button and all those things that you purchased at the market come flowing down the conveyor belt. You can yank them off the conveyor belt, take them over into your arms room and complete your build before you go into the next fight. The game already features multiple vendors, so as you pull stuff out of raids, whether that's equipment that you don't want to keep, or it's items like GPUs or other specific equipment that's extremely valuable on the marketplace, you can haul it out in your backpack, go over to the vendors, sell those items to certain vendors to increase your reputation with them, which will lead to more favorable trade negotiations with that specific vendor in the future. You can also accept missions, which will give you specific tasks to carry out whenever you're actually in a raid conducting operations. These missions can vary from kill X number of bad guys or collect X number of items or any other thing that you could possibly imagine. And if you complete those missions and you come back and you report completion, you get rewarded in the form of credits and reputation for doing so. The developers are also working to include your basic survival mechanics in the game as well. So things like hydration and food will become even more important and it'll influence the way that you stock and store and use consumables to make sure that you can stay in the fight. So how about that gameplay? I know you guys are curious to learn more of what the actual raids are like, and I'm here to tell you about it. At this point, I've had the opportunity to do 10 or 15 raids, and it's all been in this one map called Missile Silo, which is a mostly underground bunker style environment that is extremely dark. It has areas where you can't hardly see even your hand in front of your face or the contents of a loot container that might be buried in a dark corner. But sprinkled throughout this entire environment are these red lights and these white floodlights and backup generator lights that create little hot spots of ambient light. So as you move through the environment, you have to pay very close attention to where you're standing and how you're maneuvering so other players and the AI are unable to detect you. And it also forces you to use your equipment very wisely. I managed to get my hands on some PVS-7 Generation 1 night vision goggles, and they're extremely effective whenever I'm working in those dark areas. But because they function very similarly to real world night vision, if I'm staring directly at something that's extremely bright, the nods get washed out and it affects my vision. So I find myself having to take one of my hands off my primary weapon system, manipulate those PVS-7s on their rhino mount up to the aft position, get them out of the way so that I can use my eyeballs to examine areas that are actually lit up by light, and then dropping those nods back down as I move through the darkness. And this creates a very interesting dynamic that you really miss in traditional 2D games that can't be replicated in any other space other than in VR, where you have to do this meticulous management of how you're going to fire your weapon while also managing your equipment to move around the environment safely. Now, when you queue up for a raid, right now you do it as a singleton. You go in as a solo player, which I have to admit is terrifying. And later you'll be able to enter into a raid with your friends as well. So you can take on these tasks in a more cooperative fashion. And when you enter into the match, you face both the enemy AI as well as other players. And I've got to say, as far as VR games go, I've been pretty impressed with the AI in Ghosts of Tabor. And that's because they seem to behave at least semi-realistically. They even outperform some of the 2D games that I've played in the past. Even if you do take them by surprise and you manage to fire a couple rounds at them, they retreat from the gunfire to cover and they'll hold an angle waiting for you to push. Or if they feel that they have an advantage themselves or if they have numbers on their side, they seem to push you. They also react well to light, meaning that if you as the player are well concealed in darkness, you have a better chance of escaping the awareness of the AI. Whereas if you're moving in the open, you're definitely going to get spotted and you're definitely going to get engaged. And I've had my fair share of encounters that I wasn't expecting expecting that absolutely got my blood pumping. And I've also had that satisfaction of setting up the perfect ambush, dropping nods and being able to put one into the head of a bot right as they walk past. 
I think that Ghosts of Tabor has a ton of potential. This is a game that I think is going to make a major impact on the VR landscape. There's something about the looter-shooter formula that is extremely compelling. Not only are you immersed in this environment that is both convincing in the way that it looks and feels because you're in virtual reality, but there's a consequence for losing. If you die in a raid, all of that gear that you worked so hard to customize to dominate your opponents is gone, and you have to start from scratch or go back to your inventory and pull a another gun off the wall. This creates a real sense of loss and of consequence, and you'll have to make the decision whether you want to go in super geared out so that you can crush, or go in more conservatively with maybe a submachine gun or a pistol and a couple of mags and an aid kit in case you need to get patched up and just go for a loot grab and come out with more than you went in with. These are the decisions that you'll have to make when Ghosts of Tabor enters early access in March of 2023. The game is available for pre-order right now. The link to that pre-order is in the description below. And if you're not quite ready to pre-order, you can also wishlist the game on Steam. I'd certainly encourage you all to do that and share this video with a friend because this is one that we're going to have to keep our eye on. I'm Controlled Pairs. This has been Ghosts of Tabor, and I'll see you in the next one.